And it reads, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way you know. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Amen. This is your call to worship. and keep them safe from day to day to day. If you have a previous program from a service you've been to previously, we'd be reciting the article faith number seven, regeneration. If you're viewing it from a device, you can recite along with us by reading it from the device you're viewing from. We are reciting unison on the count of three. One, two, three. We believe that the scripture teach that in order to be saved, the sinner must be regenerated or born again. That regeneration consists in giving a holy dispensation to the mind that it has in effect and in matter above our comprehension by the power of the Holy Spirit in connection with divine truth so as to secure our voluntary obedience to the gospel that is in proper evidence appears in the holy fruits of repentance and faith and newness of life. Amen. Our church covenant. And it reads, <clears throat> having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and a profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully into this covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage therefore by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We are also engaged to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindreds and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealing, faithful in our engagement, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid our talent, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and the use of intoxicated drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our effort to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. And now to him who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, be the power and glory forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we call upon the one who placed the stars in the heaven, the one who set the moon and the sun, our divine creator, Lord, we come calling on thy presence right now, Lord. Lord Jesus, we come thanking you. We thank you for the laying down of last night and the early rise of this morning, Lord. We thank you for placing your angels around our homes last night, Lord. For your protection that you gave us last night. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning with the house of prayer on our mind one more time. Lord, we thank you for the ones that are sitting at home right now focused in on you. We thank you, Lord, for the word that is going to go forth this day, Lord. Lord, but we pray, Lord, that someone hears your word, Lord, and come yielding unto you and giving their life unto you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the breath that we breathe right now, Lord. Lord, we don't know how this day is going to end, but Lord, we know it's going to end up in your hands and your hands alone, Lord. And Lord, whatever it is, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. For Lord, we love you for what you did for us on the cross over 2,000 years ago. And Lord, let your Holy Spirit erupt in us this hour, Lord. To lead us and guide us through all that we're going through right now, Father. For Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now will you please focus your attention to the announcements. Good morning, 4th Street family. On this Pastor Emeritus Celebration Sunday, November 22nd, 2020, these are your announcements for the week. As a reminder, this week of Thanksgiving will be a period of rest for the church starting November 23rd through the 28th. However, we will continue with virtual Bible study and church school classes. The music ministry is requesting that all members please donate two labeled pre-wrapped Christmas gifts for a boy and a girl. You may bring all the items to the church office by December 16th. For more information on how to sign up as a volunteer, please contact a member of the music ministry or Sister Angelique Riggins. The youth ministry is preparing for the Christmas recitation. For your child's Christmas speech, please contact Sister Mary Kinnebrew or Sister Denise Dolman. Causes to celebrate in November. Happy birthday to all members born this month. And congratulations to all new parents and grandparents. And to Deacon Anthony and Sister Angelique Regans who celebrate their 20th wedding anniversary in November. Congratulations to Sierra Walker and Keandre Harper who received the GMBC 2019-2020 Youth Scholarship Award. And congratulations to Deacon Carlton Coleman who received the 2020 Joanne Otto Distinguished Service Award. He was also recently recognized by the Georgia Gerontology Society with the K. Hine Change Agent Award and by the National Guardianship Association as the 2020 Member of the Year. Boy Scouts Troop Number 69 recharter and registration is happening now through December 15th. Fees are $33 per boy. For more information, please contact Deacon G or the church office. The Georgia Senate runoff election will be held on January 5th, 2021. Voter registration deadline is December 7th and early voting begins on December 14th. You may early vote at the City Service Center. Join us each Sunday for Sunday worship experience via live stream on our website at 4thstreet.org or on our Facebook and YouTube pages starting at 7.45 a.m. and again at 10.45 a.m. You may also tune in with our radio listening audience at Foxy 105 FM at 8 a.m. or on WRBL TV Channel 3 starting at 8.30 a.m. for a rebroadcast of our services. Weekly Bible study is held as follows. Join us for deep sea fishing on Sundays at 5 p.m., spiritual brunch on Mondays at 11 a.m., engaging asking on Wednesdays at 6 p.m., with the exception of the fourth Wednesday. You may join one of these Bible studies via Zoom or on our Facebook Live. 
Spiritual Transformation Church School classes are held every Sunday morning at 9.30 via Zoom. Join us for Christian Family Class, Training for Service and Discipleship Class, Intermediate Class, Men and Women's Class, Women's Class, Men's Class, Young Adult Class, or our Primary Class. For more information, for Zoom meeting ID invite details, please contact one of the church school teachers listed here or the church office. Virtual children's class is held every Monday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. For more information, please contact Sister Sharonda Porter. Sympathy is extended to the Haynes and G family for the passing of Sister Tiffany N. Haynes G. Please keep this family in your thoughts and in your prayers. Please mark your calendar for these upcoming events. Tuesday, November 24th is the Deacon's Ministry Teleconference at 6 p.m. Join us on Thursday, November 26th for our Thanksgiving worship experience at 7.45 a.m. Saturday, November 28th will be Real Talk with Men at 8 a.m. And Young Adult Ministry Meeting will be held at 6 p.m. And on Friday, December 4th is our First Lady's Birthday. Please remember to stay connected with us. Visit our Facebook and YouTube pages or download the 4th Street mobile app. We also encourage you to visit our website at 4thStreet.org. Tithing alternatives are as follows. You may mail your check to P.O. Box 1591 Columbus, Georgia 31901 or use the finance drop box located inside the educational building. We also encourage you to use Givelify. At this time, we ask that you please direct your attention to the names of the members provided here on our prayer list. Please keep them and their families in your thoughts and in your prayers. If you are interested in accepting the invitation to discipleship, please contact the church office following service today. Please call 706-324-2055 or email the church office at 4thStreetMBC at gmail.com. At this time, we'd like to welcome and acknowledge all of our guests who are joining us in our live stream audience. We're so pleased that you joined us today and hope that you'll be led to join us again. God bless you. As a reminder, regular church office hours are Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on Saturdays at 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you have information for the weekly announcements, please email them to the church office by Wednesdays at 4 p.m. God bless and make it a great week. Have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Givelify is giving simplified. Givelify is the simplest, most beautiful way to give and track donations to the place of worship or charity of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated forms to fill out or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser, worship service, or conference you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to choose your donation amount. Tap 2. Select the campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit or debit card, complete your donation in one tap and get an immediate donation receipt. Setting up recurring giving is a simple two-tap process. Tap the frequency you'd like and you'll never forget to make your gift. Givelify lets you easily see your complete donation history. Mark the place of worship you normally attend as your home for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done. Good morning. How you all doing this morning? I'm uh, Brother Purdy, one of the sons of the House of Fourth Street. Uh, just a reminder, uh, please call the one on the sick and the shut-in list and check in on them. Please wear your mask. Please keep your six foot distance. We know this is the holiday season. We know that some of you all are gonna travel and some is gonna stay at home, but please be mindful of where you're going and what is going around uh, 
in this world today. We know we want loved ones to be with us, but be mindful of the things that's going on in our society right now. Amen. I know we may be having some technical difficulties. Would you be? Would you just give me a thumbs up if we are all ready uh, for? But let me just ask: They're preparing. Uh, they're getting things together. We always know that there, there's uh, always possibilities in terms of technical difficulties, and so we are blessed to know God's grace, Amen. God's Amen. mercy, and God's love. And so he pray that we will also show his patience. But let me just say this. Um, I want to say bless Thanksgiving to everyone. I know we're coming up to Thanksgiving Day, but as I always say, the redeem of the Lord, we know that every day is a day of Thanksgiving. But we know that that has been set aside to designate this time of gratefulness, gratitude, it's also for family. And for what Reverend Purdy, Brother Purdy has already indicated, I know with these are unprecedented times. Uh, it is not as um, it has been where we can invite family over and gather and even though we want to, but we're encouraging us to uh, if we do it, do it in a way that will protect each other. If it's going to be outside, hopefully we'll have beautiful weather. Uh, but if not, we ask that you would explain it to your family members and pray that they will understand that we want to look forward down the road. That prayerfully, if God allows us to see another Thanksgiving, then we will be able to come together at that time again. This is a very serious virus. We are not alarmist by any mean. We are not those who walk in fear. We do walk by faith, not by sight. But we're very clear on the passage where Satan tempted Jesus to jump off of the temple roof or the temple highest point and said, the scripture says that he would not allow you to dash your foot or feet against the rock, the stone. The Bible says it is written that you should not tempt the Lord your God. In other words, he's saying, I don't have to prove that God is faithful. God will protect me. And so I say to us in this pandemic, we do not ignore the science. We do not have to tempt God prove himself that he's able to protect us the same way we don't have to walk out in front of a Big Mac truck with the idea that God will protect us. So I ask that we will take responsibility and accountability of protecting one another. With that said, let me just say to you, uh, this is the Sunday that we have set aside to remember the life, legacy, and leadership of our beloved late Pastor Emeritus, Johnny H. Flakes Jr., and we are grateful that you would think enough of the legacy, the life, and the leadership. He would have pastored here if God had allowed him to see this Sunday. On the fourth Sunday, he would have been pastoring this church for 58 years years and so I uh, remember him fondly I remember him uh, dearly and as a father as a disciple as a mentor uh, 
in the preaching ministry, in the pastoring ministry. Uh, and I am so thankful that you thought enough to allow uh, this underservant, this under shepherd to have the baton passed on. And so I'm grateful, I'm very humble. And so we do have a tribute, so I'm gonna ask, they've given me the thumbs up, so we're gonna ask that they would go ahead and play the tribute at this time. Thank you all so very much, God bless you. I trust in God. Could you do that? Wherever I may be Upon the land The door of the church is open On the rolling sea Though come what may From day to day, my heavenly Father watches over, over me. I trust in God. right now an object of his care I'm glad about it he guides the e go through the path of his hand and the joy I get surely he Heavenly Father watches over, 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 over me. I trust in God. I know He cares for me. Will you come right now? On mountain bleak, on the rolling sea, the billows roll and roll and roll. God, keep my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, my heavenly Father. Watches over, 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 over me. The invitation is extended. As we stand, if you feel led, will you come? The Lord reaches out to you now. Why not start this year off in the right way? Why not start off afresh? Renewing your faith, recommitting yourself, rededicating yourself. Will you come? Thank you so very much. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. 
we are thankful again to be reminded of the legacy, the life, the legacy, and the leadership of our beloved and dear Pastor Emeritus J. H. Flex Jr. God bless you. I do want to ask if you would keep in mind as well as if you would lift in prayer the White's family, uh, the Scruggs family, uh, Brother Jerome White and Sister White, uh, Nancy uh, Scruggs' mother passed on uh, yesterday or day before, maybe Friday. And so we want to keep them in our prayers. And also Brenda Tharp, the Tharp's family, we want to ask you to keep them in your prayers as well. I want to give thanks to our deacons ministry, Deacon Moore, and also our House of Hope um, food ministry uh, for co coordinating with four of the churches to meet the need of the community by giving away over 400 bags of food on yesterday, drive by and drive up. Um, and so it was very well coordinated and we thank you so very much for your uh, helping with that effort. I want to thank the police department and the marshal department for providing officers to be here to help manage the traffic and also the flow of traffic. So we're very grateful. Thank God for the St. Saint, Saint Mark AME Church, Pastor Moore, as well as the Friendship Columbus Church, Baptist Church, Pastor Anaton, as well as First African Baptist Church, Pastor Green, uh, the Greater Beulah Baptist Church, Pastor Mickles, and the True Vine uh, church with Pastor Adrian Adria Franklin. So we're very grateful that these churches were able to come together in this community and to provide that need for those who came by on yesterday. So we're grateful. And um, we want to ask that you would know that we are on a period of rest. We are on the period of rest. Uh, we took a poll on uh, Wednesday, last Wednesday, in terms of whether there were those who wanted to just basically, during this period of time, when we're not in a pandemic, uh, we would just, every ministry would go on a period of rest. Uh, and, uh, but because we are finding ourselves uh, in extended rest, for some of us, <laughs> finding ourselves uh, <laughs> staying in place and physical distancing that I wanted to be sensitive to everyone. So uh, we said those who would want to come on Sunday evenings to deep sea fishing, we will be there. Those who would want to come on Monday morning for Bible study, spiritual brunch, we will be there. Zoom by Facebook Live and calling in. Uh, and then those on Wednesday, Wednesday has grown into a tremendous um, engaging asking. And so uh, our young adults had ch actually wanted this when we were not in the pandemic. So this is how this came about. And so it has sustained. And so uh, we are asking that those who would want to come and ask questions or want to engage in whatever uh, topic you want to put on the table, then we're, we're there. Uh, so uh, Jackie is making sure that we will have our rest. <laughs> we, have, we have discussed wanting to go out and go to a place of remote, uh, but we have decided that we will uh, have our time together uh, in our place of abode, our residence. So I'm thankful for her being willing to look down the road and say, but after this, we need to make, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I, we are going to plan on uh, taking some time away, uh, but it's not for us wise to do that at this moment. Uh, although we, we, we really want to, we really do, but uh, we're gonna stay in place and uh, enjoy each other as we continue to walk through this pandemic. And we encourage others to, but if you have to go, then we ask that you would practice. Take, take your own sheets, take your pillowcases, cases, and take your Lysol and all that stuff. If you gotta do, just say, I got, you know, but, uh, uh, but we're going to restrain for the moment. God bless you. 
Um, we are very grateful for Sister Janice Granville to join with us this morning. And so after the, the pastoral prayer, we're going to ask that she will prepare to come and bless us with song. We thank Sister Tandra Holyfield, Brother Phil Allison in the house, and also uh, Brother Antoine Johnson on the organ. And, and um, I want to thank Brother Phil Allison, who was our DJ yesterday. I mean, it was, we were giving away food, and we were, we were rocking and rolling at the same time. <laughs> God, we come before you, and we thank you for your laughter, your humor. The Bible says laughter is good for the soul. It's good medicine. And Lord, we pray that in this pandemic that we can see reasons to laugh, to enjoy one another. While we approach the day that's been designated as Thanksgiving, we, we thank you every day for what you have done and what you are doing and what you will do. We just want to say thank you for being such a gracious, loving, and caring God. Thank you for your compassion for those who are bereaving the going home and the transitioning of loved ones. We thank you for your comfort. We thank you for your provision for those, O oh Heavenly Father, who are walking through this pandemic and for whatever reason they were not able to, they are not able to provide for their needs, but we thank you for through churches who walk in your will and your way, are able to allow them to see that you promise you will provide for every need according to your riches and glory. So we thank you for those who have hearts to be generous givers, and others will experience your provision and your, your presence. We thank you for family, we thank you for children, we thank you for grandchildren, we thank you, Lord, for fellowship one with another in the body of Christ. And although we're not able to make it face to face, person to person, we thank you for you providing the mediums that we can continue to connect one with another. Those who are streaming live, those who are Facebooking live, those who are even in our radio listening audience at our 745 morning of praise, even through the television ministry, we thank you for allowing for those mediums to be available to preach your word, to witness beyond these four walls. Thank those, thank you for those in the streaming live congregation. Bless them now. Keep them in the palm of your hands. Bless those in hospitals and nursing homes and ICUs and CCUs. Keep them in the palm of your hands. Let your will be done. For we know that you are sovereign. We know that you are an omniscient God. You know everything. And you are in total control. You are everywhere. Now we ask these prayers prayer in your son Jesus name open ears and minds to receive thus says the Lord it's in your precious name we pray amen let us hear Shanice Granville at this time
on, come on. How many believe? What a beautiful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. The name that every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess the wonderful, beautiful name of Jesus. Anybody in the streaming audience know what a wonderful name it is? Anybody in the Facebook live audience know what a wonderful name it truly is? You ought to just call that name, that name Jesus, the sweetest name I know. You ought to just go ahead and give that name praise. You ought to exalt that name. You ought to just go ahead and give that name praise because he's worthy of all of the praise. You ought to just go ahead and worship. What a wonderful name. What a beautiful name. What a sweet name. The name of Jesus. Thank you, Sister Granville, for reminding us in this pandemic, in the midst of systemic racism, in the midst of unemployment, in the midst of where over 250,000 deaths in these United States of America coronavirus deaths, deaths we still can know what a wonderful name it is what a magnificent powerful sweet name it is the name you can call it his name in the morning <laughs> call it a noonday call the name late at night the name of Jesus thank you Jesus thank you to God be the glory for that wonderful name the person Emmanuel the Christ Messiah Jesus to God be the glory I want to ask today at this 1045 period of worship I don't know if Tandra heard tapped into this sermon and knew or Janice I don't know Tandra, Tandra said it was the, the spirit the Holy Spirit kindred minds to God be the glory but we want to ask if you would please go to Revelations chapter number five. I want to really focus our attention, the verses six through nine, Revelations chapter number five, verses six through nine. Our text verse will be that ninth verse, Revelation five, verse nine. Let us hear what John writes. Many believe while he was on the aisle of Patmos under the power of the Holy Spirit as Jesus shares with him Revelation chapter number 5 verse 6 he writes and between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and with seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth and he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne 
And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Amen. I want to use as a sermon title, I want to tag the text this morning, Real Redemption. Real Redemption. When the Bible subject of redemption comes up, several questions come to mind. What is being redeemed? Redemption is from what? Redemption is for what? And redemption is done by whom? The answers and understanding to these questions is essential to the Christian faith. So this morning in the streaming audience and Facebook Live audience, those who are seated, the remnant here, uh, I want us to focus on four emphases related to real redemption. Here's emphasis number one. What does redemption mean? Have you ever really thought about it or asked the question or contemplated it or discussed it? What does redemption mean? Alexander McGrath, a noted British theologian, said this about redemption. Perhaps the most basic meaning of the concept of redemption is buying back. Buying back. To crystallize this I'd like for us to consider the example for those who study Old Testament and New Testament. As in the practice of redeeming slaves, and let me just go ahead and make a distinction here because it is not out of the context of slavery that we've read about, a slavery that our forefathers, our foremothers experienced from a European slave trade and from the Middle Passage and even to Jamestown. That is not the slavery that this is referencing or that in the Old and New Testament. Amen. Amen. As in the practice of redeeming slaves, a, a familiar event in New Testament times, at that time, people often, don't miss it, sold themselves into slavery sometimes for fixed periods to raise much noted and needed funds for their family. A slave could redeem himself by buying his freedom, by buying his freedom. The Greek word used to describe this process could literally be translated as being taken out of the forum. being taken out of the slave market. The fundamental idea here is of restoring someone to a state of liberty 
with the emphasis laid upon liberation rather than upon the means used to achieve it. In the Old Testament, God is often said to redeem his people even at the year of Jubilee. Everything that was owned, slaves were given back their freedom, they were given back their land. Again, the emphasis fall on the act of divine deliverance or liberation rather than upon its financial basis. A the basic theme throughout the Bible is that of redemption. From the very beginning, in the garden, man inherited our sin nature from the first Adam. And we, being born in Adam, indulge that sin nature and we have become slaves to sin. That does not exclude the great, 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 grandmama Eve. More and more we alienate ourselves from God. Come close. Do you know what? Streaming live audience, congregation, do, do you know what the remnant sitting here? We could not help ourselves. There was nothing we could do about it. We, we were bound for hell and there was nothing we could do to stop it. Some preachers say you had a one-way ticket to hell with no return. It would take someone greater than ourselves, you or I, to save us. To redeem us from that fate that Adam put all of us in. If you read Romans chapter 5 and you go down to verses 12 through 21. It says by one man sin came to many. Even before you were thought of. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah said everyone that was born of a woman is born into iniquity. So it took someone greater. with a wonderful name, <laughs> a beautiful name. For those of us who believe and know Jesus the Christ, I believe it will not be until we actually are in heaven and in the presence of Jesus that we fully understand how sinful our condition was. When we realize our inability to save ourselves. When we see the holiness, the righteousness, the justness of God. And just how sinful and depraved we are. And our sinful condition would never allow us to ever, ever earn our salvation. When we see the great love that God had for us, redeeming us with the blood of Jesus and what a great price that was to pay. All this considered and realized when we step foot in heaven, I do believe that praising God and lifting high the name of Jesus for all eternity will be a spiritual, natural reaction for us. Us, those who declare that Jesus the Christ is Lord of our lives. Believers in Jesus the Christ. Redemption mean buying back. Here's emphasis number two. Redemption is from what? And if you haven't caught it by now and begin to, the Holy Spirit illuminating your mind and, and beginning to connect, uh, then, then just keep on listening. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9, our text verse 
The New King James verse, their version says, and they, listen, and they sang a new song, saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. To crystallize this biblical truth, a story is told of two men who grew up as best friends, except that their, their, their lives took a different path. One became a judge and the other a criminal. And at one point, the criminal ends up in the judge's court. And he is obviously guilty. But he was the judge's friend. And if the judge left, let him off, he would not be fulfilling his role or dispensing justice. So what he does is he sentences his friend to the appropriate fine for his crime. He then steps down from the bench, takes off his robe and, and, and writes his friend a check for the amount of the fine in full. This is what God does in Jesus. He sentences us to death for our sins, but then steps down from heaven and pays for our sins in full with his death. In our text passage today, the scene in heaven is that of the 24 elders who represented the saved from all humanity, singing praises to Jesus, to the lamb who was slain to open the scroll that held the future of the earth. They pointed out that Jesus, for you were slain, Jesus died on our behalf. Because of sin, the debt we owe is death, our death. That's why in Romans chapter 6, verse 23b, the New King James Version says, For the wages of sin is death. But I can't leave it out. The last part says, But the gift of God <laughs> is eternal life. That, 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 that death began back in the Garden of Eden. The penalty for violating God's rules is death transgressing the boundaries of God. Adam and Eve had only one rule and they violated it. The penalty of death. We are due the penalty of sin, which is death. But I love but. Anybody in the streaming audience love but? Anybody in the room that love but? But. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 in the New King James Version says this, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for whom? For you, for me. Yeah. Yep. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. Who's him? Jesus. Jesus was the lamb. The sacrificial lamb, the Passover lamb. We remember the Passover, those who come, the Bible study, those who read Old Testament, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. When Pharaoh would not let the people go, God sent the death angel to kill the firstborn male of every household. You do remember the story. The Jews were to slaughter a lamb, put the blood on the doorposts of their houses. The death angel passed over all the houses with the blood 
on the doorpost. Come close. Don't miss it. God did not see, come close, the sinful people inside. Come on, somebody. This just this make my heart just sing. He only saw the blood of the lamb. So my brothers and sisters, it is with us and Jesus. God does not see us, but he sees the blood of Jesus that covers us. The lamb that was perfect and without blemish. That is the story of the whole Old Testament. Sacrifices were made to cover sin. Blood was required. Hebrews chapter number 9 verse 22 in the King, New King James Version says, And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Redemption means buying back. Redemption is from what? Sin. But here's emphasis number three. Redemption is done by whom? So that we can be very clear. Jesus paid for our redemption with his blood. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9. That, 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 that's our text. And have redeemed us to God by your blood. Other translations have purchased men for God. Who were the men purchased from? Who? Whom was the redemption or ransom paid? Have you ever really thought about it? I know we hear certain things. It was paid to God. Come close. It was paid to God. We had become slaves to sin. And the penalty for sin had to be paid. Oh, I know uh, there's a popular misconception and erroneous teaching. The misconception is the price of redemption was paid to the devil, was paid to Satan, was paid to the adversary. Nothing, my brothers and sisters, could be further from the truth. The devil, Satan, Lucifer, the adversary, the liar, is condemned and unredeemable. The redemption was payment to God. The payment for our sins. Let's be clear. The fact is, the whole human race stands condemned before God because of sin. Just read Romans chapter 3 verse 23. It says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We owed a debt to God that we cannot pay, could not pay, unable to pay. We see this outline for us throughout the whole Bible. It began in the Old Testament sacrifice. All the sacrifices made in the Old Testament was just a foreshadowing, a shadow, an archetype. A typology, a symbol, what the perfect sacrifice to come, the Messiah, the Christ, Emmanuel, the wonderful name, the beautiful name, the magnificent name, Jesus. We were not redeemed, my brothers and sisters, by doing good works. But many in the world believe in a salvation of works. 
Many believe in that great scoreboard in the sky. If my good deeds outnumber my bad deeds, then I win a free ticket to heaven. But I just come by to say to you, my brothers and sisters, I love you enough to tell you the truth. It does not work that way. And I'm afraid the road to hell is paved by many with their so-called good deeds. But the fact is, there is no good thing we could ever do to earn God's favor. To earn salvation. To earn eternal life. Nothing, don't miss this but the blood nothing but the shed blood of jesus the christ the sent one would have satisfied a most holy righteous and just god yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing but the blood of jesus redemption mean buying back redemption is from what Sin. Redemption is done by whom? Jesus. Here's the last emphasis. Emphasis number four. Real redemption. Come on, come on. Real redemption. Hebrews chapter number nine, verse 12 in the New King James Version says, Not with the blood of goats real redemption and calves and cows and rams but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once once for all having up, obtained eternal redemption once for all all our sin past present and future are covered. It was not with silver or gold real redemption. It was none of other than the blood of Jesus shed on that Roman cross at Calvary over 2,000 years ago. 1 Peter chapter number 1 verses 18 through 19. The New King James Version tells us nothing that you were not redeemed. Knowing, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. But with real redemption. The precious blood of Christ yeah, 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 yeah. as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. It is all about Jesus and what he has done for us on Calvary, on an old rugged cross. Ephesians chapter number 1 verse 7 in the New King James Version tells us in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness to God be the glory of sins according to the riches of his grace we didn't deserve it we don't deserve it but he continues to extend grace day by day and I thank God for the operating definition of mercy because it was by his, by his mercy he did not give us what we deserve I don't know about y'all but I get ready to shout all on that by myself the Bible has several words my brothers and sisters that describe this payment this ransom this Redemption Jesus paid on our behalf. The words you will hear are atonement or the complicated theological word propitiation. The NIV and the CSB has atoning sacrifice. The, the word propitiation means to turn away the wrath of God with an offering. What would turn away the wrath of God? There is nothing. 
we could ever do to turn God's wrath away. Amen. His wrath on us means death. Amen. Only Jesus' blood satisfies that holy wrath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all oh, my brothers and sisters, as I rest to my seat, as I get ready to close, here is the victory. God wants us. God loves us. God, through Jesus the Christ, has adopted us into his family. He has set us free from the bondage of sin, from the power of sin. The redemption paid was our adoption fee. Y'all don't know when to shout. Ephesians chapter number 1 verse 5. New King's, New King's James Version tells us. Having predestined us to adoption as sons. By Jesus Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will. That does not exclude women. Boys. Girls. White. Black. Asian, Latinos, Hispanic, it does not exclude. This is something we need to understand by way of the Holy Spirit. Cannot be understood by just intellect. It must be illumined. It must be enlightened by way of the Holy Spirit. God does love us and wants us to freely love him. But oh my brothers and sisters, we, we have the problem. We have the problem of this virus. This virus is not the coronavirus. It's not COVID-19. This virus is called sin. And we cannot no matter what kind of vaccine they come out with. Hey, come on, Pfizer says it's 95% right now effective. It's looking for safety. It doesn't matter what kind of vaccine that the world would come up with. It cannot. We cannot free ourselves from this virus called sin. It is only by believing and responding to Jesus that we can be free. But many will stay, my brothers and sisters, in spiritual darkness. Many will not surrender to God through Jesus the Christ. Many want nothing to do with Jesus, that wonderful name. That beautiful name. Or, or they, 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 want to, they want Jesus on their own terms. They want Jesus to be at their beck and call. And that's not, my brothers and sisters, the way it works. Turning to God through Jesus to Christ is an act of repentance caused by the Holy Spirit. Turning away from sin. The thing that binds us and turning to him. Second Peter chapter number three verse nine, the New King James Version tells us the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God desires all to be saved. First Timothy chapter number two, verses two, three through four in the New King James Version tells us, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. It is all about Coming to Jesus, the author and the finisher 
of our faith. It all, it is all about being in the family of God as sons and daughters adopted in the body of Christ into the family of God. Romans chapter 8 verses 15 through 16. The New King James Version tells us, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And oh, my brothers and sisters, if we truly be the children of of God we are in his family yeah. and the local family of God we call the ecclesia the called out church okay. which Jesus is the head yeah. like family we come together we support one another we all have believed and accepted the same redemption that Jesus paid for us. Alexander McGrath, in his book entitled Redemption, says this about the church and those in the church. I quote, that is what the church is meant to be According to Alexander McGrath, he go on to say, the community that accepts and welcomes those who have already been accepted and welcomed by God. It is, as Augustine of Hippo often pointed out, like a hospital that receives wounded to tend to them so that they might become whole again, even more so that they might become what God wants them to be rather than what they were forced to be through living in a fallen, broken world. Acceptance and love precede renewal and recovery. Redemption in its deepest sense is about being accepted as we are while being transformed into what we are meant to be, unquote. So I just come by to say to us this morning, we come to Jesus just as we are. There is nothing we can do to clean ourselves up for him. He paid the price. His blood cleaned us up. And I just want to remind you what a songwriter wrote. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And as I have said before, Jesus loves us. Jesus loves you just the way we are. But let me just go ahead and make you to come to understand prayerfully. He loves us the way we are but he loves us too much to leave us the way we came to him when we come in our brokenness when we come in our fallenness when we come in our sinfulness he has made a way for us to approach the throne of grace through his blood of Jesus he wants 
wants us when we have truly been redeemed he wants us to be set aside to love one another to show his presence in our lives he does not want us and he will not leave us the same way we come to him and so those of you in the live streaming congregation I extend an invitation to you right now even though those in the remnant that find yourself present here right now I extend an invitation to you right now will you accept the redemption paid for you I did not say to come and join a church I did not say to enter into a religion but I'm talking about having a love trust obedient relationship with God through Jesus the Christ so you might ask me how do I how do I receive the redemption of Jesus the Christ how do I receive the real redemption of Jesus the Christ well I just want to go ahead and tell you what the Bible says you must believe he came down through 40 and two generations conceived in the womb of a virgin called Mary by the Holy Spirit you must believe he went to a hill called Calvary gave his hands to the nails gave his wrists to the nails is there anybody in this house and gave his feet to the nails laid down say if you think I'm going to fight you just go ahead and nail him to an old rugged cross if you think I'm going to run then nail my feet to an old rugged cross but here's what I want to tell you if I be lifted up I'll do the drawing in other words my death will draw all men boys and girls unto me showing the unconditional love of God through Jesus the Christ showing his mercy through and from God through Jesus the Christ showing his grace is there anybody in the house from God through Jesus the Christ showing his compassion and his forgiveness from God through Jesus the Christ go ahead lift me up because I prayed a prayer in John 17 father glorify the son and let the son glorify the father where was that glorification where will he glorify his father it was on a Friday between the sixth of the ninth hour while he was being crucified the S-U-N refused to shine while the S-O-N was glorifying his father he was shining the love he was shining the forgiveness he was shining his come on somebody his grace and his mercy and he prayed a prayer father forgive them for they know not what they do the Bible says a Roman soldier at the foot of the cross said surely this must be the son of the living God the Bible says he said it's finished Tadalestai I paid it in full I paid the penalty for sin I've broken the dominion of sin I've broken the power of sin it's finished I finished the mission that my father sent me on I just want you to make a distinction I'm not finished it's the mission that's finished because I'm going to lock my head in my shoulder my father promised that he'll raise me in three days the Bible 
says he locked his head in his shoulder and gave up the ghost cried out into thy hands I commend my spirit the Bible says Joseph of Arimathea Nicodemus went to Pilate requested his dead body put it in a bar a new tomb the Bible says he stayed there if you truly want the real redemption you must believe he stayed there all Friday night stayed there all Saturday and Saturday night but I thank God for early is there anybody in here anybody in the streaming audience I'm glad that early is there anybody in the house the story didn't stop on Friday it did not stop on Friday Saturday but early early Sunday morning he pulled the sting from death pulled the victory from the grave rolled it up in his divine hand placed it in the vault of eternity and stepped out on resurrection ground early Sunday morning declaring all power is in my hands in heaven and in earth he had the power is there anybody in this house power to resurrect power to forgive is there anybody here I'm so glad that early Sunday morning he was raised from the dead demonstrating God's promise is absolutely true his power is absolutely real and I'm so glad he walked around for 40 days showing himself to the disciples letting them know real redemption is possible for you he ascended to sit on the right hand throne of the father the Bible says that one of these old days he's coming back again but unto then he's prayed the Holy Spirit will come and take up residence in every believer and he's there is there anybody in this house he's there to help us live out the Christian life so that others will see Jesus Christ in our lives. Real redemption through Jesus the Christ. The shed blood of Jesus the Christ. There's no other way that we can be Redeemed. If anybody asks you <laughs> just who I am, tell them I am. I am. I am redeemed. Jesus paid the price by shedding his blood for those who would come to believe in him that's good news y'all I don't know about you but it is good news it's hope for the hopeless help for the helpless that you too can be redeemed I don't know where you are in the streaming audience I don't know where you are and I want to extend an invitation to believe in Jesus the Christ. Believe. Jesus says the work is to believe in the one who sent him. And so we extend that invitation to you right now. If you do not have a love, trust, obedient relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Then we invite you to come. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and God has raised him from the dead you will be saved whosoever call on the name of Jesus will be saved and you can call this number right now 706-324-2055 706-324-2055 and just say to them that I am saved I, I've repented of my sin 
the Holy Spirit had convicted my mind that I'm a sinner and I need a savior in my life and I invite Jesus to come into my life I invite him to take control of my life I surrender my will to his will I surrender my way to his way then you call that number right now 706-324-2055 wherever you are if you relocated to the city the surrounding area whether it's Phoenix City Fort Mitchell Muskogee County Columbus Georgia Harris County Casita wherever it is we invite you to come unite here at Force Missionary Baptist Church maybe you relocated here because of military reassignment maybe you relocated here because of a job relocation maybe you relocated here because you're matriculating through one of the colleges one of the universities one of the trade schools one of the technical schools maybe community colleges we invite you to come to unite here at Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church that you can grow in the will the way of the Word of God call that number 706-324-2055 his arms are wide open to receive you. Our arms are wide open to receive you. Will you come? If you want to recommit your life to Christ, if you want to be restored back into fellowship, call 706-324-2055. Give them your name. Give them your number that we will be able to follow up with you. That you too can walk in the victory of Jesus the Christ even in this pandemic coming out of this pandemic you will know that you have Jesus that you are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus to God be the glory real redemption we thank you for your patience. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your participation by streaming live and the remnant that are here. We thank you so much for your commitment, your devotion, your dedication. We're going to ask right now, if you would please prepare your heart to continue to worship through giving. We believe that God is a generous God. We believe that Jesus is a generous Jesus. We believe that the Holy Spirit is generous. And we ask right now that you would demonstrate those who are connected with God through Jesus the Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, that you would demonstrate a generous spirit by bringing the tithe and the offering. We ask that you would now go to GiveLify, go to the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church site, look for the crib, the cross, and the empty tomb, and you can bring tithe and offerings now. We ask those who will drop off during the week that you would go ahead and prepare the church envelope that has been provided to you. We ask that you would designate your tithe and your offerings. Make sure you have your name, your address, your contact information, and you can come through the week, Monday through Saturday, between the hours of 10 to 4, Monday through Friday, and Saturdays 9 to 1. Please remember, on Thursday, we will have Thanksgiving. The church will be at rest that Friday. And that Saturday, we will resume back that Sunday. But Monday through Wednesday, the church will, will be available to you. The educational building. If you decide that you want to mail in, we ask that you would go ahead and prepare your church envelope and put it into a addressed envelope Address it to the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church, P.O. Box 1591-1591, Columbus, Georgia, zip code 31901. We thank God for your generosity. We thank God for worship. 
we thank God for your connecting with us and staying connected with us. Please remember to pray for us as we will pray for you. Dear God, we thank you for this offering. We thank you for the generous givers. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for their devotion, their dedication, their allegiance, their loyalty, their love, and their trust, and their obedience unto you. Now we pray you bless them and bless the offering that has been given, the tithe that has been given, that it will continue to advance your kingdom. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you again. Bless Thanksgiving to you. We thank God for your patience. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let us all sing. Praise, praise. my heart and I was praying God how can I pay tribute to the life the legacy and the leadership of Pastor Flakes I pray that preaching the gospel would be the tribute to him today power to all may God's blessings be upon you <laughs>